Hey y'all, welcome and welcome back to my channel. It's me, Kia Simone, and listen, before we get into the saga of Candy versus Marlo, let me start by saying uh, happy Father's Day to all the daddies, the stepdaddies, the sugar daddies, and the big daddies. Happy Juneteenth, happy Freedom Day black people. So I gotta catch up on these last two episodes. Of course, before we do, please be sure to like, share, comment, and subscribe if you have not already. And shout out to Yvette Greer on the Super Thanks. Thank you so much. Now let's go ahead and get into this. So last week's episode opens up with Marlo going to lunch with a couple of her friends and they're talking about her dating life and her raising the boys. And of course, she gets right back around to the center stage of her storyline, which is this beef with Candy. She goes off about how she's tired of Candy being able to cherry pick her storyline. She gets to pick and choose what's put out about her and she gets to shape the perception that the public has of her. Marlo doesn't feel like it's fair for Candy to be able to use the show to promote her businesses and then pretend that this whole headline wasn't out there about her restaurant. Now, I'm going to tell you, I, I do feel like Marlo is coming out of absolute left field with this bullshit. However, some of the stuff that she's bringing with her out of left field actually makes sense. Now, I do agree that if you're on a show where the premise of this show is the cameras following you around to get your reality, if there's an incident that happens in one of your businesses and your promoted reality is that you're this super businesswoman, then why is that whole incident off limits? I don't understand. Candy had an entire spinoff about her restaurants. And now when there is something that's unfavorable that happens, you, you want us to pretend that the restaurants don't exist. We don't want to talk about it just sweep everything under the rug. I could see if it was something that was not in the public eye, but the fact that it was all over the news, I, I, I would think makes it fair game for conversation. Marlo said her family was shocked that Candy didn't do anything at the time of her nephew's passing. My thing is, if they were so shocked and so offended, why did it take you two years and all these events and scenes later for you to bring it up. Marlo has been kicking it with Candy like ain't nothing happened and we never heard nothing about this much less Candy over Candy not showing up for her family. I'm sorry, I just feel like Marlo's pulling this bullshit out her ass, I'm sorry. Marlo's girlfriend who she's talking to ain't no damn help because she's telling Marlo, yeah, I agree because you know, if you have an employee that works for you that passes away, the least you do is send a card. Well, well ma'am, didn't Candy establish that that gentleman was no longer employed by her business at the time of his passing. And in the confessional, Marlo was saying, you know, how her nephew was this loud, vibrant person and that he was gone. And Candy just skipped over it like it was irrelevant. And I don't know, maybe it's just me, but Marlo talks about her nephew like some distant relative. She does not talk about him like somebody that she had a close personal relationship with. She talks about him like somebody she barely knew and barely interacted with. And because he happened to be within the six degrees of separation between her and Candy, she's using it at her convenience. That's just what it's giving for me. So then we move on to Sonya's house where she's at home with her mom and her sister and her and her sister's kids. Well, she's announcing that her Mommy Nation brand recently got picked up by Belk.com and she's all excited about it. But the problem is she doesn't know if she has the staff to support it, being that her family members is quitting on her. So Sonya decided to address the elephant in the room. She addressed her sister and said, listen, I think I might have offended you when I told you what Ross said. And her sister said, yeah, more than offended, you shocked me because... I feel like this setup works best for y'all. Sonya says she don't disagree. She says she ain't quite sure what exactly Ross is calculating, but she is making sure to point out to him that, hey, um, when we put these folks out, you, you do know that's the living nanny and all that is going with them. Sonya said it's not lost on her that she has the freedom to get up and come and go in and out and cross the country as she pleases and always knows that her child is at home safe with somebody that she knows and loves. She said she don't think Ross always thinks about the logistics of a situation because as a matter of fact, she's having the same calculation issues with him in their marriage that they're supposed to be trying to get pregnant, but he done missed four cycles. Well, well, well how? Sound like 
like you might be the next one getting put out there. That sounds like avoidance to me. What you mean y'all supposed to be trying to get pregnant? He done missed four cycles. That sounds planned. Sonya says she's going to have a discussion with Ross to discuss a more realistic timeline for her family to leave. Well, her sister said, I don't give a damn what you talk to your husband about. As for me, my churn, and my husband, we about to pack the hell up and get the fuck up out of here. Her mom said it is a little bit unsettling to be put out, but she can see retirement right over the horizon. So she got something to look forward to. I don't give a damn what y'all do around here. So for some reason, Sonya is offended by her sister saying they're leaving regardless. I don't care what you talk to your husband about. And Sonya says, well, I don't feel like I should be the only one having to fight for y'all to stay. Her sister said, well, it's real funny that you should say that. Sonya said, well, I mean, if y'all feel like that, then what am I fighting for? Ain't no need in me fighting. Like, how do you tell people that I know I asked y'all to move in here for us to be this whole family business and family unit, but my husband tired of y'all and y'all got to go and I really can't handle you being offended about that like how, how you got an attitude that they got an attitude that you told them they got to get out Sonya said well you told me you moving out regardless so that's why she got an attitude like girl you can have a discussion with your husband to move the timeline from now to later but they still got to get the hell out so like I don't understand what she's offended about the scene wraps up with them trying to feed their kids Sonya's sister asked her could you look and see if I left my child's food on the other side of the kitchen Sonya's so damn childish. She said, absolutely not. Since you don't like it, you don't like being here, you look for your own shit. I said, I know you lying. Not the lady you just finished saying you leave your child with and go rip and run here, there, and everywhere, all over this damn country. You wouldn't walk across the damn kitchen to see where your nephew's food is, girl. So we move on and we see that Kenya is opening a hair salon. Okay, girl. It's under construction. She brings a girlfriend to come along for this walkthrough and they sit down in the middle of this construction zone to talk about Kenya's dating life because that's what Kenya's dating life is, a damn construction zone. Kenya said, you know, I've been a wife for the last five years. Girl, see, this is part of your problem. You live in delusion. You have been legally married for five years. I don't know if you've been a wife a good six, nine, 12 months of that. You've been in divorce court longer than you've been married. Stop it with the, I've been a wife for five years. No, you have not. Kenya is saying how she really enjoys the guy she's seeing now, but she doesn't know how to date and he's always out of town. And how can you date and build a relationship with someone who's always gone? You know, Mark was a long distance relationship and we see the disaster that that is. Kenya said she married Mark in seven months and she's been dating this guy Roy for over a year. And they're no closer to being married and you ain't no closer to being smarter. Why are you trying to do the same bullshit you already did that clearly did not work? Kenya's girlfriend told her, look, just please go with the flow. Relax your damn nerves and just let this happen. Just have a good time, okay? She said, I'm, I'm gonna be your zen friend because you will fuck up a wet dream. Kenya said she really appreciates that. She really needs that because this group of girlfriends that she has is really nasty. Well, girl, you fit right in. So Kenya decides she's gonna brief this girlfriend on Marlo. Let me make sure you don't like this before I let you meet her. She's telling her about the whole Alabama incident. She was kicking on my door and how she had Brooklyn scared and upset. She said, Marlo has this thing where she likes to play the victim and she's nobody's victim. I said, well, now ain't that the pot calling the damn kettle black. And for some reason, Kenya decided to run down Marlo's rap sheet to the lady. She said, yeah, she's done a lot of stuff in her past and she slashed a girl's face and she went to jail for months over that. I, I, I so wouldn't a random hell. So we move on to Sheree's house where we see that she has become a grandmother. Her son Cairo has a little girl. She said he just came home one day and announced that, yeah, I got a baby on the way. And then and, and a few months later, a baby showed up. So here we are. Sheree was very emotional and very proud of her son for the way that he has stepped up and that he is a hands-on father. We got to see them do some ornaments and crafts. Then we move on to Drew and Ralph's house. They're at home playing with their kids and competing for attention. They going back and forth about who's been sick more, who's had more surgery. I know they have bad competitions at their house. Ralph said he has not had nearly as much surgery as Drew. He don't know what she talking about. She said, yes, you did. Yes, you did. She named three surgeries to include something below the belt. Now, I don't know if he went and got some stuff snipped and clipped. Or if he got some stuff added in, I don't know. She just pointed down there and he said, oh, okay, you right. So then we move 
move on and we see this scene where Sheree is out to dinner with one of her girlfriends. And the girlfriend is asking her about Martell and said, are you getting more than two pumps these days? Ma'am, what? Ma'am, ma'am. More than, more than two pumps. Martell. Sheree was so embarrassed. Sheree said, what you mean more than two pumps? You mean on my moisturizer? Her friend said, girl, I'm always cheerleading for your... Oh my God. You need to be embarrassed. I know you ain't running around being a hoe showing off that disability. No wonder ain't nothing going on because ain't nothing going on. Uh-uh, sir. You got to get that together. So we move on. We go to Candy's house where Todd is at home working on his script. And once again, she ain't got time to be bothered with that bullshit. She sits down to talk to him and she's talking to him about anything but his damn movie. She let him know how the girl she don't like, Courtney, is having an event and they had a whole conversation about what she's going to wear to the event that the she don't like is having and, and wouldn't talk nothing about this man's script. Just Todd Blink if you need help. And she's in the confessional talking about how he's been working on the script for over a year, but they haven't been able to really focus on it because they've been fully focused on her. So he really needs a Todd win but you do anything but help him win. Rather than even sit in this conversation and let this conversation be about him, Candy hijacks the conversation to talk about a you don't even like. I don't like this chick. I don't want to go to her event. I'm only going because I talked to Magneta and so-and-so and so-and-so and they say they going. So while Candy is sitting with Todd, she gets a FaceTime call from Kenya. Kenya calls her to run back the gossip that Marlo is running through the group. She said, Marlo is telling the group that not only did you not acknowledge the passing of her nephew, that her nephew met his killer at your restaurant. Candy said, well, it's all news to me. I didn't know I was the villain for not sending flowers and condolences. I didn't know he supposedly met this person who unalived him at my restaurant. I, I didn't know none of this. Candy said in the confessional, she thinks that Marlo is trying to take an unfortunate incident that has happened to one of her family members and amp it up to tear down her business. And Kenya said that she is going to come to this gathering that Courtney is having so that she can be there for Candy. Girl, Kenya works my nerves because Kenya ain't nobody's friend for real. It's not that she gives a damn about Candy or she truly has Candy's back. Candy, first of all, is the person who seems to be in Bravo's pocket the most. So of course she's going to stay in Candy's pocket. And I really think it's fueled more than anything by the fact that Kenya don't like Marlo and she ain't going to never like Marlo. After Marlo threw Kenya's mother in her face all those years ago, I don't think she's going ever with Marlo. And that's what I think is fueling this. She don't give a damn about candy. It ain't so much I want us to play candy. No, I want to make sure you know what this says so I can make sure you know not to like this bitch. Candy gets off the phone with Kenya. She is pissed off, but she's a lying ass bitch. Todd is just yes manning his way through the situation. Yeah, I know. Yeah, she ain't shit. Yeah, don't worry about it. Just like you ain't worrying about this script. So we see all the ladies come together for some paintball, escape room, survival of the fittest activity. I don't know what the hell they doing. Y'all can't get along in open free spaces. And now y'all gonna lock yourselves in a room and rely on communication and an ability to work together to get out. Child. Well, all the ladies showed up and they brought their beef with them. We saw Drew and Courtney get there first, followed by Marlo. Drew made it very clear she's not speaking to Marlo. The other ladies are arriving. We see Sonya and Kenya and then Candy. And when Candy came, Candy had a full-on damn attitude with her. They asked Candy, are you, are you okay? Candy said no. Well, Candy said not only is she not all right, she ain't going to be all right until her and Marlo clear the air. So she, Marlo, and Drew go off to the side to have a conversation. So to start the conversation, Marlo said, tell me what you heard so I can understand exactly how it got back to you. Candy said, I don't know. All I know is something about it. I didn't send y'all no flowers and condolences and catering when your cousin or somebody passed away. She said, well, first of all, it was my nephew, okay? And secondly, my issue is nobody has an issue using clear, direct language when they're talking about me. Nobody has a problem saying Marlo is a convicted felon. Marlo slashed a woman in the face. Marlo's a whore. She said, but when it comes to you or other people in this group, we're going to tiptoe around this stuff. I said, now, Marlo, when you're right, you're right. Marlo went on to mention a scene that they showed us at the beginning of the episode, which is her going to Candy's house two years ago when she told Candy about the passing of her nephew face to face. She said, when I told you about my nephew passing at your house that day, I really felt like you didn't want to deal with it. So I left it alone. So at this point, Candy is pissed off. She's going off on Marlo about 
You're trying to attach your nephew's chitty chitty bang bang to me and it ain't got nothing to do with me. Over at the table, we see Monietta and she is just so concerned. She's about to go in and make sure that Candy is okay. Girl, I mean, it's absolutely giving emotional support companion. I mean, damn. Candy said in the confessional, she feels like anything Marlo can find to try to tear her down, she's running with. And in the confessional, Marlo said she's not upset with Candy for the passing of her nephew. She's upset with Candy because she ignores things and people allow her to get away with it. Now, in the middle of them going back and forth, Drew decides, I need to talk. I need to be seen. Please, somebody hear me. She interjects herself into the argument. But, well, I have something to say. Marlo said, you, you don't need to say nothing. Well, I do need to talk because at the end of the day, at the end of the day, you are irrelevant. Monietta has gone over and checked on them and she comes back to the table. But I just, I just, I don't like this stuff. Sheree said, I think you need to just let them talk it through and work it out on their own. Get your own damn emotional support companion. Back in the corner, Marlo and Candy still arguing. Marlo is talking about how her sister called her crying. Candy said, ma'am, your nephew stopped working for us months before he was unalived. I mean, what do you want from me? Marlo said, so then what does that say about your character? Candy said, what? what? What does what say about my character? What are you talking about, Marlo? So Marlo starts explaining what she means. She says, you don't have any problem bringing up some shit that I did 23 years ago. But two years ago, I come to you about the passing of my nephew that happened at the hands of someone that he met at your restaurant. Candy is upset. He didn't meet him at my restaurant. He didn't work at my restaurant. She said, I didn't say it was somebody that worked at your restaurant. I said it was somebody that he met there. It could have been a patron. It could have been anything, but he met the person at your restaurant. On top of that, this wasn't some random employee that you didn't know. Y'all have Christmas pictures with him. You got pictures of him and you by yourselves. You have multiple pictures over a period of time with him and he passes away and you just pretend like nothing happened. Now, I'm going to tell you, once they started showing the pictures and stuff of him with the whole crew and him with Candy, I think... What Marlo might be getting at is there was some level of personal familiarity, some level of personal relationship. And being that not only did he work for you, but you and I have a relationship, I just would have expected a greater level of acknowledgement once they started showing the pictures of them together it got a little more real for me and it did kind of look like okay maybe this was someone that you might have known who he was so now candy and marlo are screaming candy is going off about you not going to attach me to this and you should have said something a long time ago and marlo said i did and you ain't gonna tell me sh bitch. at this point now the other ladies have stepped in because candy is flailing her fingers and they're trying to separate them Candy about to lose her sh about don't hold me back. So now in the middle of this melee, you have Drew who is off to the side talking about Marlo and how Marlo is so aggressive. She's so aggressive. She needs to go. And of course, production zooms in to show Marlo with her hands on her hips. She's purposely holding her hands behind her back so that nobody can accuse her of being a violent felon. It's, it's the other lady, the nice, sweet, rich lady that's over here trying to throw bows. And I get that Candy takes her reputation seriously and all that, but I don't get why this is getting this level of reaction. Okay, you were offended that I didn't show up to support you and your family and the way that you felt I should have. I'm sorry about that. I'm sorry that you feel that way. Unfortunately, there's nothing that I can do to correct that now, but please accept my apologies and my condolences. And if that's not enough for her, then that's just not enough for her. But to get to the point where you fighting mad because somebody is telling you, I don't like what you did and I don't like how you handle my family and I don't really think you my friend. Oh, okay, girl. Sonya said in the confessional, I don't understand why is Marlo the one being called aggressive when Marlo is hugging people and she's standing here collected. It's Candy losing her shit. Drew is a dangerous type of person. Drew is the type that cannot be trusted. She's the type that will call 911 and say you whooped her ass when you ain't touched her. Because for her to be running back and forth about Marlo is so aggressive and she just needs to go and take her outside when the lady ain't did shit. 
And if the other person who is clearly being aggressive tells me you are a flat out liar and nothing you say can be trusted. So Candy's going off telling everybody don't hold her back and she gonna whoop Marlo, Marlo try her. Marlo say you ain't gonna do shit. Marlo say your character is exposed, you ain't shit and now you gonna cry like you always do. That's why you mad, now go ahead, cry on key. Candy was a little teary eyed as usual. She said the only reason I'm about to cry is because I can't choke you, bitch. So the ladies split up into two groups. You see Candy, Kenya, Manietta, and Drew all go outside, leaving Marlo, Sheree, Courtney, and Sonya inside. Well, as soon as they get outside, Candy said, well, before we talk about anything that goes on in my restaurant, let's talk about that lady whose face you slashed. I said, now, ain't this exactly what the hell Marlo just said? We can't talk about Nothing that has happened in any of your establishments, your marriage, your restaurants, none of that shit. But you can bring up the one thing you feel like you got on this person. And you're going to do that every time some bullshit on you is brought up as a tool of deflection. You full of shit. And production confirmed that she full of shit because they pulled the clip from two years ago of Candy saying people always want to identify Marlo by her mug shots and want to throw her charges in her face, but she's really a good person with a sweet heart. And as soon as she pissed you off, and as soon as you need something to weaponize against her, you did exactly that. Now, Candy has made it very clear that she has friends and family members that have been in the system. So my thing is when they come out, and they hit the street. As soon as they piss you off, do you throw all their charges in their face? Is, is that, do you do that? Or is it only with Marlo? So they're outside and Drew is gassing Candy about, yeah, she's crazy. And you mean to tell me she's talking about something that happened in 2020? So y'all can bring up some shit she did or some shit that's associated with her and her name from 23 years ago. But, but can't nobody mention current events about y'all. Please go to hell. So Candy pulls up her text messages for the ladies to prove that Marlo was speaking to her very kindly at the time that all this happened. And now all of a sudden she got a problem. Sonya says she don't understand why does the conversation have to go to an HR timeline of when he worked there and when he didn't work there and why, why is it this deep? Marlo said because it's Candy Burris. And she has to be painted in the best light, didn't you know? So they're in the parking lot making themselves feel better by dragging Marlo. Kenya is dragging Marlo by she ain't got no character. Her character went out the window when she slashed all those people's faces. And Drew is in the confessional about all Marlo has to do is shift her weight and it's a fight. She was about to fight Candy. And production showed her with her hands behind her back as Candy is swinging fingers and poking and jumping like she wanted to fight. I cannot stand Drew. And in the confessional production asked Candy, did you feel threatened by Marlo during this fight? She said, hell no. So Sonya decides she's gonna go outside, check on Candy and see if she's okay. That's when she realizes Candy is leaving. Candy said when she gets to the point that she's threatening people, she's not thinking clearly and she needs to leave. Yeah, yeah, you are right. So Sonya is asking the rest of the ladies, why do y'all think it escalated like that? Like, why did it have to go there? Drew said, because that's who Marlo is. That's her energy. The last time I saw Marlo, she was attacking me. Sonya said, why, why would you say she's attacking you? Why, why? Drew said, well, because that's how this whole thing started, that she was upset with me for going easy on Candy for calling the shooting an incident. But I'm from the South Side of Chicago. And because of all of the shootings that happen in Chicago, we don't use that word because it only perpetuates it. Well, everybody who was just on her bullshit bandwagon dropped off. They said, now, now, see, that don't make no damn sense. What do you mean? Y'all don't use the word because you're from Chicago. Girl, what? And that episode ends with Candy and her crew leaving. Sheree say Kenya and Monietta act like they just crossed the burning sands of the candy-coated clip. And girl, you ain't never lied. The ass kissing is too much for me. Now, while they trying to paint Marlo out to be the violent one, Kenya, Monietta, and Drew are all in the parking lot trying to show off their Power Ranger skills about how I can kick your ass and all of them look like they're going to get their ass kicked. Sonya said, as black women, we have to be careful about perpetuating certain things. She said, Drew is talking about not using certain words and not triggering certain things, but then y'all are running around calling this girl aggressive when she clearly had her hands behind her back. And Marlo finally started to break down. She said, leave my past alone. That's why I'm not vulnerable. That's why I don't open up to these girls because how did I suddenly become aggressive? So we move on to the next episode and Drew is making a music video. 
she's meeting with the music director and she starts trying to name drop the movie that she was in, I don't know how many decades ago, about she was in Step Up. The man said, what's that? She said, this man has made videos for the likes of DJ Drama, T.I., Soulja Boy, uh, ma'am, he, he don't know you. So Drew is explaining to the director that the kind of music she makes, she wants to be representative of her, including her sexuality and that marriage can be difficult. The man said, well, let me ask you, how long have y'all been married? She said, well, it's been eight years. He said, okay, it's been 27 for me. If you can make it through this eighth year, y'all will be all right. Well, sir... They ain't made it a damn place but the courthouse. The man said, but speaking of might not work out, uh, do you think your husband is in shape enough to be the leading man of your video? Because see, I got some scenes planned that I, I need somebody in shape and not just in my damn way. He said, do you think his abs are ready? I mean, because if not, we might have to recast him. So I'm going to send you a bunch of pictures of a bunch of sexy ripped guys for you to pick from. Drew said, oh my God, you're going to get me in trouble. Girl, that's a damn plan. Girl, just say Ralphie running off, touching something different any damn time he get ready and I'm going to touch something different too. That's all that is. So we move on and we see Kenya and Sheree go to the spa. They go to some cryotherapy spa to sit and freeze their ass off, literally. So... They go in and the first thing we see is that Sheree is all excited that Rihanna shouted out she by Sheree on the internet. She says she is very flattered and proud of herself to be acknowledged by such a celebrity, especially when she had the likes of Candy hating on her. Well, ma'am, you didn't help the situation, okay? Now, this was the part that blew me. As they getting into these freezer tanks, uh, Sonya wants to tell us what the benefits are of this cryotherapy, about how it's going to help so much in her quest for pregnancy. Well, ma'am, hold on, hold on. I don't know. I know we got science and there's a lot of advancements and sh like that, okay? How is freezing your ass off supposed to help you get pregnant if your husband ain't coming to get no ass from you? I don't, un I don't understand. He in another state while you in a freezer. And show a sh when they got out them freezer tanks, they sat down to talk. Sheree asked Sonya, well, what's going on, girl? Sonya said, well, nothing much. I just haven't seen my husband in a while because the business back in Austin, it's booming. And he's back in Austin taking care of the business. Sheree said, oh, well, does that mean you're going to move to Austin? She said, no, he actually wants to bring the business to Atlanta. Sheree said, well, how is all that working and y'all supposed to be trying to have a baby? And, and Sonya didn't have an answer. So then they bring up the whole event where Candy and Marlo were going at it. And they were saying they don't understand why half of the group left and it makes the group feel divided. Sheree said, you know, it really bothered her. And that's why she decided to throw a Gucci party to say, let's be Gucci. I said, what in the love and marriage Huntsville Hill is this? So then we see Sonya go meet with Candy to advocate for Marlo. We see Marlo go to dinner with Courtney to thank her for connecting her with resources to get her charges expunged. She said the reason it means so much to her is because Courtney came into this group and rather than judge her and throw her past in her face like all the other ladies, she actually came in and helped her. So Candy and Sonya get together at OLG to catch up and as they're catching up, Candy lets Sonya know she's about to be done messing with her and her homegirls. Look, Sonya said, well, why are you about to be done with me? Candy said, because I feel like you be riding the fence sometimes. Sonya said, no, what it's about is I don't want to keep getting burned in Marlo's fire. Sonya said she basically doesn't want anybody to question their friendship with her because she's friends with Marlo. Candy said, well, for me, it's the times when you try to downplay the stuff that she does. That's when it annoys me. But sometimes Candy gives, she's going to have a problem with you unless you are absolutely 100% on her side with no questions asked. Candy asked Sonya, so you don't see that she has a pattern of saying something and then taking it back and saying, I didn't mean that over and over again. Sonya said, the thing is, Candy, what got back to you is not what she said to me. So back at dinner with Courtney, Marlo is saying all she was trying to explain to Candy is that that she was hurt. So Courtney said, well, why didn't you mention it to her sooner than now? Marlo said, because I hadn't seen her. Girl, what? You hadn't seen her? Marlo, bye Marlo. Marlo said in the confessional that she feels like if Candy had reached out to support her 
at the time of her nephew's passing, it would have drawn them closer together rather than push them further apart. Marlo said, but she's just over it now. She said she wants people to know what she was thinking and you know, it is what it is. But why did it take getting a peach and the side conversation between Drew and Candy to trigger all that? So at OLG, Candy starts to tearfully explain to Sonya that she's not the sentimental friend because she lost her brother when she was 15 years old and that numbed her. So she's not the kind of friend that's going to cry with you. She's gonna try to find you opportunities and do things to motivate you. And she said Marlo knows that about her, but she's trying to use that against her and make it seem like she's this bad person. Sonya said she just doesn't understand why the group is divided. Candy said because everybody else realizes that Marlo is a damn fool, but y'all insist on playing with her. So we move on to Drew's video shoot and she claims that they had booked some other talent, but that talent realized that they double booked. So they ended up having to use Ralph after all. So then we move on and we see Kenya going to visit her OBGYN to discuss her options for having another baby. She has some embryos that she conceived with Mark. She said the way that their contract is set up is that in the event that they split up, she owns the embryos, but she does feel like morally she would owe Mark a conversation because he would have another child coming into the world. Well, my thing is, Mark is barely involved with the one y'all got. Why do you think he give a damn? Why do you think he's going to have a conversation with you about an imaginary child? So the producer asked Kenya, y'all have been going through a divorce for years. Why would you want to have another baby with Mark? She said, because I don't know anybody on earth who would want to have children with more than one person. Well, listen, I get wanting to have children with just one person, but if the one person you got a child with treats you and the child like shit, I, I don't think I would sign up to go through double the shit with that same person just so I can say all my kids got the same shitty daddy. Her doctor also told her after the delivery you had, no ma'am, no ma'am, I'm gonna go on record and TV saying no, I don't recommend it. So then we move on. Now, the only thing I found interesting about this Gucci party was Marlo dragging everybody for their fashions or lack thereof. She said Kenya's outfit looked thrifted. She said Drew looked like the Gucci handyman. Candy looked like she was going to a bowling tournament. She said Sonya looked like she ran straight into that sample size suit she had on. She said Sheree, yeah, Sheree is the host and she looked real nice in her Gucci, but she looked like she about to give a deposition. I just, girl. So Sheree starts explaining to the group that she is just so torn up up about them not getting along and she wants them to work this out and that's what the hell is you crying for so candy and courtney hash out their issue that should have never been an issue so y'all please going on out our face so then sonya and kenya move to discuss their issue sonya brings up that she's trying to be kenya's friend but she doesn't feel like kenya is reciprocating it kenya said yeah that would be because you went on a show and that show would be Watch What Happens Live. And she said, you said unfavorable things about me. They showed the clip. Andy asked, do you think Kenya's butt is fake? Sonya said, well, you know, when Marlo breaks it down and points it out and you really look at the shape of it, it does look like a fake booty. And Kenya is upset that Sonya didn't participate in her delusion and just go along with it and say, I mean, it looks good. It looks fake. My thing is one, why are you upset at people calling a fake ass a fake ass? And secondly, are you as upset with Andy for asking as you are with her for answering? So they get around to the Marlo versus Candy issue and Marlo said she's over it. She just was letting Drew know that she expected a different reaction from her friend of 10 plus years. Marlo said, I can't make anybody like me who doesn't like me. Kenya said, well, yeah, people ain't gonna like you if you always attacking them and being evil. So Marlo is trying to plead her case. Nobody is letting her finish. She's trying to explain that she's genuine in her feelings. Candy said, you're not genuine because at the end of the day, you wouldn't want your name attached to a murderer and I don't think anybody here would. So Marlo goes on to explain that it actually wasn't even me that brought up the shooting that happened at your restaurant, it was Drew. It was just the way that she brought it up triggered me. Drew said, oh, here you go trying to wrap me up in your trigger. Girl, shut up. Drew starts trying to overtalk Marlo. Kenya is screaming, the lies, the lies. I mean, it's just like grown up children. So Marlo decides she's done. She's getting up to leave. Sheree is trying to ask her to stay. And she's saying, listen, I could sit here and have a respectful conversation with every woman here, but y'all ain't letting me talk. 
Kenya is like, I need your respect, bitch. Oh, bottom rung, bitch. Now see, when somebody drag you by your wig, you gonna wanna cry victim. Kenya thinks she's so much better than everybody else, but she is absolutely classless and tactless. Now you getting your ass dragged all through court and you got fight and smoke for everybody except the man who's dragging you. Girl, go sit down. Marlo goes stomping outside. Sheree goes and chases her down and brings her back. Marlo says she thought she was going to a brunch, not her crucifixion. Now she couldn't pronounce crucifixion, but you know, that that that's between her in the Florida school systems. Kenya is at the table screaming about how she's a fucking bitch and she sold her pussy for a bag. Kenya, and you sold a marriage with no prenup to a man for a baby girl. So Marlo comes back inside. She starts explaining to Candy that you had absolutely nothing to do with my nephew's passing. My issue was that as my friend, I thought you would have done more. I thought you would have shown more compassion. My sister and my family were like, damn, ain't y'all friends? She ain't call you a nothing? So Sonya said, steps in to try to explain where Marlo is coming from. She says to Candy, I think you're kind of missing her point. Candy is absolutely pissed. I don't need you to be her lawyer today. Listen, Sonya is Jamaican, okay? All right, you ain't gonna do too much loud talking on a Jamaican. So Sonya got loud and mad too. Now Candy said, well, what I'm saying is fuck her flowers. The flowers her and her family wanted. I, well, well, if that's how you feel. Candy told Marlo, you only doing this to try to get some sympathy for yourself. Marlo said, no, I'm telling you about yourself. That's what I'm doing. Marlo said, I'm a thoughtful friend. I buy you gifts. I check on you. She said, but you are a different breed. You're selfish. Well, now, I mean, when she tell the truth, she tell the truth. Marlo said, you're a selfish, spoiled, privileged girl. Sheree jumped up and said, you know what? This didn't go like I wanted it to go. Marlo said, it went great. Uh, well, all right. And the episode comes to an end with Sheree saying, yeah, the night might not have gone like she planned, but she pulled it off. It was a disaster, but that's one thing she specializes in, delivering a damn disaster. But that's it, that's all, and I ain't got no more. Thank you so much for coming down here listening to me and letting me get this off my chest. Please be sure to like, share, comment, and subscribe if you have not already. And in the meantime, until next time, just like every time, I love you and I mean it. Bye.